guys stuck around? Of course we did. Aww. If you're in the back, come forward. Come forward. How's, Caleb's got some music. Good for him. Good. Uh, so we're going to do improv. Just uh, yell, heck yes, if you've seen an improv be show before. Heck yes! Say heck no if you've never seen improv before. Heck no. Nice, this guy. So, uh, improv, uh, everything we're gonna do on stage is totally made up. We're gonna get suggestions from you. Uh, I have an amazing team of performers, and uh, we're just gonna hop right into it, because I know it's late. You guys are all awesome and waiting for that hot, warm shower. So, uh, we did have one person that uh, didn't quite uh, hit the list on the talent show that just came in, but luckily we saved them to open up our show. So, it's Basil, Basil, Basil? Basil! Yeah! Hop on up here and open our show. Give a round of applause. Do you want any theme music? Anything I should just mumble up here? Do, 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 do. I have many voices. It's okay, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. showed up. I had a whole team. Um, so there's this one guy, and nobody really knows who he is, and he says he has a resume where he's done some improv before. Uh, so if, if you guys, I'm so sorry about this, I just have to interview this guy real quick just to make sure that he's ready to perform with me. Uh, so, uh, stranger, if you'll come out, if I can just talk to you for a second. Uh, this is looking real promising. <laughs> this is great. Uh, that's close enough. All right. Um, and, uh, sir, can you just please tell me your name? Yeah. Meryl? Yeah. And, Meryl, what's your last name? Pretty good comedy name. Uh, Meryl Pandrews, what do you like to do for fun? Sing. You like to sing. Wow, well, if you saw the last talent show, there's a lot of amazing singers. What's your favorite song to sing? Charity. <laughs> Charity chair? <laughs> Could you just uh, give me a little, like, of the first line of Charity Chair? <laughs> That's exactly how I thought the first line would go. That's amazing. And uh, what is your uh, your horoscope? Horse. Your uh, what? Horace. <laughs> and that means you were born when? April! <laughs> April, yep. Okay, sure. Uh, and uh, do you have any kids? No! No kids. But you have that sweet girlfriend, right? Yeah! <laughs> and when she gets uh, really excited about a beautiful, sunshiny day, what does she yell out? Oh! She's not, you know, she's not complex. Um, and uh, you wrote a, uh, a haiku uh, about uh, uh, Tim's favorite animal, which is what? What's your favorite animal, Tim? Sheep. Goldfish. Goldfish. That haiku about that goldfish. Can you just say a couple lines from that haiku? Goldfish. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, that that's that goldfish in my scales. I get it. You know, it gets right here. Um, and, and just lastly, before you go, you almost have the job. I mean, you're really on top, and I feel like I'm being haunted by your performance. Um, you got a fortune cookie, correct? Uh, that uh, amazing. What was the name of that Chinese restaurant you got the fortune cookie at? Change House. I love, I love the Pad Thai at Change House. Um, and you opened up a fortune cookie, and what did it say? You will feed in love. You will feel in love. Awesome. And once again, just tell me your name. Story, a story that's never been told before with this lovely ensemble. If you just want to line up in a horizontal line. Uh, now the catch is, uh, we're all going to tell this story together. I think I have enough little slack. Um, so we're going to start with a story that's never been told before. And uh, if I point to you, you're going to say, once upon a time there was a camel and his name was Dave. And Dave every day walked to the store. So if I point at you, they're going to pick up exactly where the last person left off, ideally. So, um, what is your favorite color, sir? Green. Green. And uh, what is a place you'd like to visit? The Bahamas. The Bahamas. Green Bahamas. The story <laughs> of the Green Bahamas. Uh, we'll try it with a mic, or do you want to just yell it out? You feel like you can yell, yell it out. out? Yell it out. I love it. Just look at me, and I'll be pointing at you. Start it with good. Once Upon a Time. Ready? Fearsome cowboys ran into the green forests of none other than the Bahamas. And there were lots of cows and horses. And uh, children running around with only underwear on. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bunch of fighting and gunshots and I was a little bit scared, but I knew I could be safe with the children with, with only underwear. Good. Green Bahamas, <laughs> chapter four. Finally, when all the cowboys were gone and nothing but green remained. <laughs> <laughs> I stood there looking, looking. There were lots of ants and and bees, tons of bumblebees, <laughs> stinging me! Out, out, out! The Green Bahamas, chapter eight. <laughs> there were, there were lots of bees <laughs> and cowboys that loved the Green Bahamas. <laughs> and there also there green bees. And they stung me so bad. It hurt my toe. My nose stung <laughs> my face, and my teeth were just bloody. <laughs> but the underwear children <laughs> were very kind and, and generous. They didn't care about the bees. Frolicking, frolicking over the green Bahamas. <laughs> the green group and you three will be a group. Hop right over here. And you guys are right in the middle. Uh, is there anything that you guys really want to know about? Facts about rhinoceroses? Uh, anything about uh, love lives? Anything I can host a TV show about? Yes. Who is Elmo under that suit? Who is Elmo under that suit? True 
conspiracies about Sesame Street, am I right? Yes. We all want to know, is Big Bird that tall? <laughs> is, is Oscar that grumpy? So I'm sorry to ruin all your childhood dreams, but we are going to say and host a show called Fact or Fiction, Sesame Street Untold. <laughs> right here, we have uh, an amazing, amazing group of three people and they can only speak one word at a time. So, so as I point to you and, and you answer these amazing questions, you'll all say one word and you'll be your own group. Does that make sense to all the players? Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You guys are all lovely. Yeah, so, everybody give a round of applause for Sesame Street Untold. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Marv's Marvelson, and I am your host of Sesame Street Untold. Today we are going to tell stories, fact or fiction, uncovering the true facts of what is Sesame Street. Has anybody been down that street? Does anybody know the zip code of Sesame Street? There's faces under all those masks. I have a panel of three amazing experts that are going to fill out the facts or fiction on what Sesame Street really is all about. First off, I'd like to introduce our first guest. Please introduce yourself. Alex. Johnson. Max. Alex Johnson Max. So many three first names. You know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, where are you from, Alex? The. Bahamas. And. The. New York. Uh, <laughs> two places, two different places. And over here we have... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yao. Yao me Yao. All right, straight from the Malaysian island. Nobody knows quite where it's from. Please say your name one more time. Meow. <laughs> All right, and it changes a little bit based off, you know, where you're from and where you're seated. So, and then lastly, we have an amazing expert. Please say your name. That's Elkin John. That's Elkin John. That's Elkin John is an expert who's written four or five unpublished books about Sesame Street. You've never heard of them, but he's here to tell the true facts. So, uh, from a raise of a hand in the audience, can I give your burning uh, questions about Sesame Street? We do know, we want to know who is the man under the Elmo mask, but can we start off with a different question? Yes, you, sir. Is Elmo really ticklish? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, over here, Alex. Is Elmo really ticklish? Maybe. I think so. He is possibly tickle ticklish, but he will never tickle me. <laughs> <laughs> be ticklish, but he's never going to tickle Alex over here. All right, and for you, say your name one more time. Meow. Oh <laughs> All right, is Elmo really ticklish? Yes. No. <laughs> yes, no, maybe. What a tease over here. You'll never know, Timmy. All right, and lastly, from your personal opinion, is Elmo ticklish? Whenever people tickle him, he will fart <laughs> and immeasurably to smell fantastically. <laughs> so it turns out that he uh, he likes to be tickled so he can fart on himself to smell uh, fantastically farty. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I will bottle that. Uh, is there another question from somebody? A burning desire about the hidden secrets of Sesame Street. Snuffleupagus. Snuffleupagus. What about Snuffleupagus? Is there really a Snuffleupagus? And what's he all about? I don't well, know who that is. Snuffleupagus is real. But he likes to play with his cookies. <laughs> <laughs> he's real, but he just likes to play with his cookies. So he's out of control. So sugar high. 
Real. Well, I guess he's cosplay. You guess he's cosplay? Okay, but is he real? Of cows and men like Snuffleupagus <laughs> likes. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of like cows and men. You know, he's a combination, and that's what Snuffleupagus is all about. Cosplay, cows, men. Yeah. Real living creatures. So I'll take that as a yes. Alright, and lastly, is Snuffleupagus real? For sh for but Absolutely. Totally not. Because he thinks that he is something real. Why does he know that he <laughs> listens very well, but he will lie a lot? <laughs> Who wears the red ticklish skin? What's it made of? Who really is Elmo? We are knowing that he is not a monster. We are all knowing that at least he's not a monster. That's, that's pretty good. That makes me feel pretty good. Because if there was a monster inside Elmo, my bed wouldn't be safe. All right. Whoa. Mitch. Is Snuffleupagus. <laughs> Mitch is Snuffleupagus. Alright, do you know Mitch? He's a great guy. He's my tennis partner, I didn't even know. You just blew my mind. Alright, so we have a Mitch, and who is Snuffleupagus? Or who is uh, behind oh, yeah. Elmo? Sorry, still thinking about Snuffles. <laughs> Mirror. Can. Imagine. But. Elmo. Is imaginary. <laughs> that might have been a haiku again. <laughs> all right. So if you look in the mirror, I think they're trying to say that we're all just a little bit Elmo. Does that answer your question? <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. My name is Marbs Marvelson. I hope we've unveiled the secrets of Sesame Street. <laughs> chairs and play taxi. Does that work for y'all? Yeah. Good. Uh, we are going to play a game called Taxi. Uh, can we get a raise of hand of four performers? Boom, 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 boom. We're going to have Joe, Destiny, Tiffany, and River. Sounds good. The rest of the players hop right over here. Um, Joe, why don't you be the driver? Joe is going to start driving this taxi cab. He's going to start it off, and you three actors, if you want to come right over there, uh, they're going to create personalities, and uh, as they come one by one and sit next to Joe, uh, Joe is going to adapt to that personality. So if somebody comes in, oh, top of the morning, I'm going to drive to the rainbow right over there, Joe will now become an Irish shirt as well. Uh, so, uh, so we'll start doing that, then the third person will come in, and maybe they're a valley girl or something, then we have a car full of valley girls. Uh, and then four, you know, you might get a mine. So then you'll drop off the fourth person, we'll go back to the third, the second. Now lastly, we have uh, Joe here driving and ending the scene. Now actors, remember, taxis do have doors. I always like it when somebody just walks right through. <laughs> Open the door, play around with your surroundings. And uh, can I get a, a, a suggestion uh, of something you might find in a dumpster? A baby. A <laughs> Uh, Joe, you're, uh, whatever inspires 
deal with baby. Don't think dumpster, just think baby life. Circle of life. Alright, go for it. I've been thriving since I was three. I wish I had some chocolate milk though. There was none in the dumpster. Oh, did I poison in the world? What am I doing? Oh my god, I've been wanting to go to the mall for so long, but I'm just a taxi driver, so I can't go into the mall. I can just drop you off. Is that okay? <laughs> as long as we can, like, totally, like, go down the street. As long as we get to Starbucks first. Oh, totally. All right, let's go. Let's go. Taxi! <laughs> oh, there's someone else. Hold on, I have to pull over again. Do you want to go to a hotel or let's drive to a bed? Let's let's go to the store. I can just fall asleep back right here. He's gone. Oh, good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. and we will adapt and uh, see where it goes. All right. You may begin.
love about improv, I'm gonna have River and Bodie hop up here, is that you can really just start a scene from anything. I've got uh, tons of games and activities that I like to teach out. Uh, teach with, but but my favorite thing about improv is I can just get a single word. So can somebody just yell out a word to me? But what? Did I have three people just say what? <laughs> if you can't hear me, then I can get it. Uh, unicorn. Unicorn. So I might switch up some things with you guys, but I just want to see a total open scene about unicorns between you two. Hey, Cheryl, ready to go unicorn hunting? Yeah. I got my gun ready for action. You got a gun? That is crazy. I thought guns weren't invented oh, yet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Actually use that microphone if you want, Joe. Uh, Sunshine, cool. you can use this one. Awesome. 
I've never done this before. It feels good, right? Just talking into a microphone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anytime uh, Max or Bodie are a little lost for words, they can point to their pillars. So for instance, uh, man, I really feel like eating a... Pancake. Pancake, yes, because the syrup on it, even though I'm actually allergic to... Butter. Yes. So you each have your individual pillars. I would highly suggest you use them as much as possible. Sunshine, any questions? No. Good. All right. And where's a, a scene, an awkward place where two people might meet? Bathroom. A bathroom. Okay, Max and Bodie are meeting in the bathroom. <laughs> Good morning. I just finished my shower. Hey, you missed the shower. Where? Inside joke. Oh. My dad gets it. Oh. All right, so uh, do you want to brush your teeth or what should we do? But there's no toothbrushes in here. This is a public bathroom. Oh, Who yeah. even are you? I don't even know. I forgot. Oh, nice to meet you, by the way. Hi, my name's Jeffrey. <laughs> and mine is Carl. Carl! Ah. Well, wait, I'm pretty sure I know you from Francisco. <laughs> and I think I know you from Cambodia. Vacation <laughs> there once. That's right. You were Jeffrey. <laughs> you were Jeffrey. I was Jeffrey. Everyone was Jeffrey. Yeah, but then I changed my name to Carl, so it would be more specific. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be like. One of those confusing cows. <laughs> I obviously include um hunting, by the way. <laughs> well, we're in the bathroom, so what should we do in the bathroom? <laughs> oh, there's a rat! I'm going to shoot it with my <laughs> cow. <laughs> well, I'm going to aim at it with my rubber band gun. Frederico Sr. And then we skip to just Frederico Jr. But he looked me in the eyes when I was a young Unicarn and said, Listen now. And I listened, and then he said, Listen to harder. And I tried. Really hard. I couldn't quite find how to open my ears, but then he whispered into my ear, You're a unicorn. You're a unicorn. I said, I waited 10 years for that. Then I knew there was more, so I turned my left head and I said, Well, gosh darn. That was it. Four thousand years. 
very simple. <laughs> well, well, you see, when my grandfather was 4,000 years old... Your grandfather was a unicorn! <laughs> no, my grandfather was actually a phoenix. Oh. <laughs> well. there, there he is right now! <laughs>